So now with Pelletti dropping out, Rick Perry dropping in, and Michelle Bachman and Ron Paul dominating the Ames straw poll, we got ourselves a race. We have a top tier. It is Mitt Romney, Rick Perry, and Michelle Bachman. We have a new top tier, and it's Perry, Mitt Romney, and Bachman. There's now a top tier in this race, at least for now, of Romney, Perry, and Bachman. I mean, I think that's fair to say. Really fair to say? You're not forgetting, I don't know, anyone, say, an ideologically consistent 12-term congressman who came within less than 200 votes of winning the straw poll? Isn't anyone going to give that gentleman a little love? There's a top tier now of, of, of Bachman and Perry and Romney, and, you know, we haven't mentioned, and we should... Thank you! We haven't mentioned, and we should, Rick Santorum, who did really surprisingly well for the amount of money and resources he had. Rick Santorum? He didn't get half of what Ron Paul got. He lost to the guy who lost so bad he dropped out of the race. Santorum? We're looking at Mitt Romney, who continues to be the front runner, but we have Rick Perry as well, and now Michelle Bachman. Let's not count out John Huntsman, though. What? John Huntsman? Huntsman got 69 votes. If if all of John Huntsman's supporters met at the same Ames, Iowa Quiznos, the fire marshal would say, yeah, that's fine, no problem. There's still some tables open in the back. Huntsman, Huntsman was the only Mormon running in the straw poll, and he came in second amongst Mormons. And by the way, this pretending Ron Paul doesn't exist for some reason has been going on for weeks. A new Gallup survey showing Rick Perry running second to Mitt Romney, knocking down Iowa favorite Michelle Bachman to fourth. Behind who? Fourth behind who? How did Libertarian Ron Paul become the 13th floor in a hotel? Why? What's wrong with... He is Tea Party patient zero. All that small government grassroots business, he planted that grass. These other folks, they're just moral majorities in a tri-cornered hat. Ron Paul's the real deal, and Fox News should love this guy. But watch the disconnect between the debate moderators at Fox's Thursday debate and the debate audience. Iran does not have an air force that can come here, just like we did in Iraq, build up the war propaganda. There was no al-Qaeda in Iraq, and they had nuclear weapons, and we had to go in. I'm sure you supported that war as well. Yeah. Okay. It's time we quit this. It's time. It's trillions of dollars we're spending on these wars. What's with the smirk and the eye roll? The, guy, the, the crowd goes nuts and you do one of these. <laughs> there goes crazy Uncle Ron, babbling about the unsustainability of multiple wars. <laughs> He's the one guy in the field, agree with him or don't uh, agree with him, who doesn't go out of his way to regurgitate talking points or change what he believes to fit the audience he's in front of. And you're treating him like if this were Celebrity Apprentice, he'd be this guy. <laughs> By the way, at the Ames Iowa straw poll, Busey beat Huntsman 77 to 69. And even when the media does remember Ron Paul, it's only to reassure themselves how there's no need to remember Ron Paul. Right now, live, right next to the bus behind us, Ron Paul is speaking. And seven of the candidates are here today. We have live pictures of Ron Paul, but you know what? We're talking about Sarah Palin, and we're talking about Rick Perry, the two people not in the race yet, Drew. And guess what, Paul? If you get video of Sarah Palin or get a soundbite from her, bring that back to us. You can hold the Ron Paul stuff. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.